A skills boot camp is an opportunity for adults over the age of 19 to come and join a course with us, a short course, usually around 12 weeks, to learn about a skill that's going to help them get into a different kind of employment. So it's an opportunity for people to come along and actually use a passion or something that they're really interested in to yeah, upskill and actually get a career in that area, which is a really amazing opportunity. It doesn't matter whether they're employed, at work at the moment, self-employed, it's a chance to learn a new skill and build a career in a new sector. The biggest successes of the skills boot camps has been the ability to have people from all over the UK come together remotely to learn new skills to then progress into a career within tech. Um, another thing that I've seen which has been really great is a lot of women coming and applying for the skills boot camps and these then lead to more tech roles so it's been really exciting seeing the confidence in, in women and, and other people coming along and taking it and really enjoying it so I've loved seeing that. So for me the biggest successes of the, the skills boot camps of the last year have been the, the fact that we've seen lots of students move into to, to new jobs within new sectors that they previously didn't have any experience of to upskill, to reboot, and be successful basically in a new, new career. So in terms of the employability skills they learn in the boot camp, they learn a lot of the traditional stuff, so CVs and how to fill in job application forms, interview techniques, but also a lot around confidence and self-esteem. It might be that they're returning to the, the jobs market after a long break, for example. And we also look at presentation skills, how to pitch, psychometrics, all the type of things that are done in modern recruitment. In the boot camps, the environment is really collaborative and interactive. A lot of our courses um, are online, they can be hybrid. So because of that, we really do try to make them as collaborative as possible. We have spaces online to interact with the other students. And this really helps with them when they're going out into the workplace because they're learning how to work with other people. And on the boot camps, there are so many different employability backgrounds that they've come from. So it means that they're getting a real taste for yeah, all sorts of different skills and things that they can add to their future career.
Emerge, a unique multidisciplinary creative practice studio for Bar Spa U Creative Incubator, helping emerging talent bridge the gap between university and the professional world. Giving creatives and artists of any discipline vital space, skills development, funding opportunities and a path to flourish. Emerge supports artists from across the creative disciplines, so there's my field, creative media and technology, but also we have fine art, performers and anything across all of the creative disciplines. The support each of us receives is fantastic, whether that's professional assistance with our own careers, support expanding our own business capability. Uh, the design residents, and they can be from multi-disciplines, which is really interesting. They will be on their own path and I'm here to support them. And it's the support that they need, which a lot of people never have. Emerge is more than just developing your own practice. It's about sharing, supporting and learning new skills from each other. Everyone has something to offer and everyone has something to learn. So Emerge has allowed me to make the transition from a postgraduate to, to somebody working in the industry. I've been able to test new workshop ideas here at Emerge, develop them, fine tune them and then share them beyond these walls and um, turn them into part of my portfolio. Emerge offers the vital resource of space and time that's key to all artist development. It has bespoke spaces from artist studios, rehearsal rooms, desks and project spaces. I engage with Emerge primarily through the use of the space. It allows me to create like larger scale works because I'm not at home and I can leave things up to dry. And also just having other artists around me, you can sort of nip over for a quick opinion, you can look at their work for inspiration. It all just helps to create this atmosphere of creativity. Pop in for a visit, meet the team and follow us on socials for updates on events, showcases and residency opportunities. Creativity is so much more than people think it can be. It is telling your stories your way. As people, we imagine and we make, often at the same time. We have an urge to create, no matter if you're just starting out or have been a master for years. It's not money that will change the world or politics. It's the sensible use of creativity, the intelligent choices about intent, and the ethical basis for action. It doesn't come from hot, sweaty offices, it doesn't come from banks, and it doesn't come from armies. It comes from inside your head. Curiosity is asking why. It's time to explore how things can be done differently, what we should be doing, and why we should be doing it. We must learn from others, especially those who are different from ourselves. Curiosity means constantly looking for new ways of doing things. It is the glue that binds us together and enables us to see things in new ways that maybe weren't there before. Confidence is being able to step out of your comfort zone and try something new and innovative. It's finding creative ways to solve problems that wouldn't work any other way. Confidence is earned. Push yourself, celebrate your wins and learn from your failures. Repeat and your confidence will grow. It's time to own your own creativity, curiosity and confidence because they will be your superpowers. We are Bath Spa University, inventors of professional creativity.
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to Bath Forum for your graduation ceremony. Go on, woo, 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 woo. Thank you. It is a celebration, so let's enjoy it, shall we? So let's get underway. My name is Mark McGuinness. I'm a long-standing member of academic staff here at the university, and it is my genuine pleasure to lead proceedings here today. I have two jobs that I will do uh, while standing up here speaking to you. The first one is to talk everyone in the room, but particularly our graduates, through the shape and flow of the ceremony that lies over the next hour. Um, and hopefully that will settle everybody, you'll know exactly what to expect, there'll be no surprises, and you can just focus on enjoying yourself. The second thing I do during the ceremony is I pop up from time to time to move us on through the different stages of the ceremony and make uh, announcements and so on as we go through. So if you will bear with me for just a few short minutes, I'll get through the preliminaries and we'll move on to the ceremony proper. So my first thing to do is to say some thank yous. Um, as you would expect, a complex set of events like graduations involve lots of different people. So I'd just like to say a few thank yous to people, and as I get to the end of it, if we could give everybody a round of applause rather than each time, that'll make things a bit smoother. So firstly, Bath Forum, as ever. Um, lovely working with you. Thank you for welcoming us to your venue um, and making things run um, so smoothly. Uh, I would also like to thank our friends and colleagues at Bath College for loaning us their facilities to put roving so close to the venue. Um, it has in previous times been quite a distance away, so it's really good to be just in the locality. I'd like to thank Premier Brass Quintet, who bring live music to our event, add such class and really make it special. And we really missed them during the pandemic, and it's really lovely um, to have them back. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to all my colleagues, those who've worked, um, I know, very long hours uh, to bring these ceremonies together. I think a particular mention this year for staff who've worked at very short notice as a result of um, what you will be aware of as industrial action in universities this year has meant there's been quite a lot of late working to bring these events together as marks have been submitted as a result of that action. So if I could um, indulge you in a cheer and a, a round of applause for all of those above, thank you. That's great, thank you. So, uh, very shortly I will ask everyone in the auditorium to stand for the entry of the academic procession and that will get us underway. The academic procession is a grand spectacle. It's very colorful. It has its roots deep in ecclesiastic tradition. Um, we wear the robes, as I do and as you do, of our most recent institution. Uh, it's nothing quite feels as good as medieval polyester, right? <laughs> good. Uh, it's a very colorful, and joyous entrance, we're accompanied by live music, really enjoy that every time we do this. So I ask that you stand whilst the procession make their way in. Today we are joined by the Lord, Mayor's, uh, Lord Mayor and her company as well. Um, we'll bring in um, some extra bells and whistles for, for this particular ceremony today and you'll see, see all that unfold in front of you shortly. We also have an honorary uh, graduate with us today who will come in with the procession at the same time. So I'll then move us through the presentation of awards and then conferment of those awards. And then right at the end, I will ask everybody to stand for the academic procession once more, who will then make their way out of the auditorium. Now, specifically to address this to the graduates, you're probably feeling a bit nervous. If you're not, you probably don't understand what's about to happen. But don't worry, um, follow the instructions of my colleagues, they'll get you here safely across the stage and back to your seat. So at the right time, you'll be asked to stand and you'll come down to this area here to your right, to my left, and you'll be assembled and you'll come up these steps or the ramp if you're using the ramp and you will get to the top of the stage. Um, along the way, you'll be asked your name to confirm your name because you're sat in a very deliberate order. You probably do realize that, but please stay in that order because that's the order in which the readers expect you to come up the steps. So making sure that people 
have the right name read out. That's important if you help us with that. Once you get to the top of the stage here, there is a blue carpet which runs right the way across the stage from one side to the other. Stick to the blue carpet and you cannot go wrong. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, the Vice Chancellor who is uh, with us today, she will be in the middle of the stage and walk towards her when your name is called. Take your time, there's no rush. You can give your family, your loved ones a wave. Some people show off their moonwalking. That's up to you. It's your moment. As you approach the Vice Chancellor, she will tip her hat to you. Just acknowledge that back. That's the symbolic moment where she recognizes the achievements that are summarized by this event today. So just give her a quick acknowledgement and a smile, and she'll give you one back. So that's how it will work. And then make your way back across the stage, um, down the steps, and we'll guide you back to your seat. Unlike previous ceremonies before pandemics and such like, there are no handshakes in the ceremony today. Uh, trust me, that's much better. There are a lot of you, and those at the back will really welcome that news. It's a contact-free ceremony. So, as we come to the end of the ceremony, and as we exit the building, graduates, you'll be exited out of the side doors to your left over there. And we'll give those instructions later on as we come to the end as well, so you know what, what's happening. This year, for the first time, you can tell from the weather forecast, we are trying something new. We're doing an outdoor reception for our graduates and your guests. And that's in the parade garden. So if you could end, you probably are aware where that is, but our guests may not be. So there will be lots of people guiding in small parties across two parade gardens to join us over there to celebrate um, in, in, a, in a less formal and more jovial way. So as we come to the end, we'll give those instructions again to make sure that people can exit. Can I beg the patience of our audience to just wait a little while? It will take us a while to exit everyone out of the auditorium. We will get you to your loved ones. Don't panic, but please take it, take it easy. Give us a chance to get people out of the building safely and then we'll guide you on to the next destination. So, that's me. A few housekeeping announcements. Could I ask you to check that you've got your mobile phone on silent or switched off at this stage? We have trained first aid staff available. Should anybody need any help, just attract the attention of any member of staff, any usher, and we'll get that to you quickly. And in the unlikely event that we need to evacuate the building for any reason, there will be a clear instruction to do so and all exits are clearly marked and all staff will be guiding you out of your nearest exit to do, to do that, to evacuate. But with no further ado, could I invite you all to stand as we await the academic procession.
or they may cease. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you'll agree that's a wonderful way to come to work on a Monday, isn't it? <laughs> Distinguished guests, graduates, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon the Vice-Chancellor of Bath Spa University, Professor Sue Rigby, to open this graduation ceremony. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> Lady Mayor, friends and guests, graduates, colleagues, a very warm welcome to this, the first of our Bath Spa University summer graduations. So this is the ceremony where you spot the intentional errors. There's an extra glass of champagne if you tell anybody with any kind of gown on. And colleagues, please feel free to remove your hats. So welcome to our ceremony to this celebration of your fantastic achievements, including the achievements of our wonderful honorary graduate, Veronica Ryan, Turner Prize winner and Bath Spa alumna. Welcome also to the Forum, this astonishing venue that we return to year on year, run by the most professional of good friends of Bath Spa University. And an early shout out to our many colleagues who are running the proceedings today, musicians, ushers, live streamers, first aiders, registrars, all of whom stand with me and my colleagues on the platform to celebrate your degree today. Because celebrate is what we are here to do. And also to take a moment to consider what your degree means and what you can and should now do with it. So I'm going to digress for a moment. In most parts of the Christian church, there are moments of transition that are considered affirmations of faith or engagements with a faith community, and they are considered to be recognized by God. Depending on which part of the Christian faith you belong to, they include things such as baptism, confirmation, marriage, ordination. In our secular and properly more plural society, there are only one or two transitions that everyone would recognize as being on that scale. Taking your degree is one of them. It's a huge personal achievement. It's a permanent mark of the status that comes from that achievement. And it is, I think, also a moment when what you are receiving is also something that enriches society more widely and which carries with it the burden and privilege of enhanced expectations. So to begin, a moment to think about that achievement. I'll state the blindingly obvious here, getting a degree is not easy, yeah? Not that easy. Um, you'll have been uncertain. Think back to your first assessment submission, the first original piece of work you produced, the first marks that you received. And by the way, we huge respect to colleagues on marking and assessment boycotts. You all have your marks today, which is wonderful. You'll have been confused, a bit frustrated, not quite understand what the marking criteria were, not quite able to understand what was good and what was brilliant. What did all this mean in this new context? That's all gone now. Because you know what brilliant means in this context. You'll have been stressed. We'll have asked too much of you in too short a time and you'll have risen to that magnificently. And then occasionally, you'll have been elated by a really good mark, by an eye-opening seminar, more likely by a sudden and deeply personal moment of insight, when the way you see the world changes. That is, in essence, what a degree comprises. And you've also done this through a COVID pandemic and through the restless anxiety of a post-COVID recovery. This does not make you victims, it makes you supers. You may remember a very famous pair of dancers from the last century, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Someone once asked Ginger what it was like partnering the best dancer in the world. And she commented that everything he did, she did backwards and in high heels. Post pandemic, you are Ginger Rogers. Earlier and later graduates are only Fred Astaire's. 
As you sit here, a successful graduate, just take a moment to reflect on that journey. Its highest moment, its lowest moment. It'll be different for each of you, but just take a second to think about that, that journey and how far you've come over the last few years. Looking back, I'm sure you'll be absolutely clear about the critical part that the support of your family and friends has had in helping you get here today. Many of these vital people are with you in the audience and be sure that the rest of them are thinking about you right at this moment with great affection and great pride. In a moment, I'd like to ask you to stand up, to turn as far as you can to face your loved ones in the audience and give a big round of applause to the folk who've helped you to get to this point both those in the room and those who aren't here in person but are in your minds. So if I could ask you to do that, could you stand up? Turn to face your loved ones and give them an enormous round of applause. Thank you. See, that's the core test, because when you were undergraduates, you wouldn't have sat down again. <laughs> you are masters of your fate. So there's no need to stand up again. But can I also ask you to join with me in thanking the staff who've taught you and supported you in other ways through your studies. I'm privileged to lead a group of outstanding academics and professionals who have you, their students, always at the heart of what they do. They work late hours, and many of them and are as delighted by your attainments as you are. So please join me in thanking them now. <clears throat> Thank you, that was lovely. So now I want to think for a few moments about what a degree actually comprises, and I don't mean by that subject knowledge though that for sure, but I'm afraid that that's transient. You'll forget most of what you know now in the next 15 years, and in 15 years, most of what you've learned will be irrelevant, sorry. <laughs> but that's good, because if you graduate in cybersecurity, it's like two and a half minutes, so, so that's all right. So what, so what is it, this degree? It's skills. You, th you can do things well that only a tiny minority of people can do, whether that's paint, code, film, throw a pop, take a photograph, and that may well be where your personal journey begins. But a degree is much, much more than that. It is the means by which you've learned to be resilient, to be resourceful, to lead, sometimes to actively follow, to be sure of your own capabilities, to be able to tackle profound challenges. A Bath Spa degree has enabled you to build your confidence. You know how much you can achieve. It's built your curiosity about people, about art and culture, about the future, about the world you inhabit and the world you will go on to create. It has built your creativity, your ability to think outside the box, to ask the right questions and to answer them in a way that makes a difference. As you walk across the stage in a few minutes, you should take stock of all this. Own it, internalize it, and become it. It's a walk of a few steps from the end of your studies to the start of your graduate life. It's a profound transition. It's a permanent change. As you start this journey, you begin by leaving us. So this is a high point in the university calendar it's a day of day, great joy, but also a day of great sadness. Contrary to what we might believe, a university is a community of learners, nothing more and nothing less. And you have been a central part of that community, and your contribution has been incredible. While we would have it no other way than that you grad graduate from our world and move on, you leave a big gap, and we are very sorry to say goodbye. But keep in touch. 
You are always part of the Bath Spa community. If we can help you in any way in your future, let us know. And we would love to hear about your successes and stories in the coming years. And indeed, eventually, welcome you back to the stage to give you an honorary doctorate. This is a community to be very proud of. Our roots stretch deep, back into the 1850s. And since then, some of Britain's finest artists and teachers have worked with us. But we are a university of the 21st century, designed to meet the challenges of a post-industrial, highly volatile and rapidly changing world. And so finally, I want to reflect on what your degree means to the rest of us, to the wider society that now benefits from what you can do. You graduate into uncertain times with an academic armory that will allow you to thrive and which can contribute to helping others to thrive as well. A degree from the School of Film, Art and Media is a passport to a wide range of brilliant jobs and careers. The creative industries are one of the UK's largest success stories and one of its biggest sources of revenue. More importantly, they're a source of joy, solace, entertainment and enrichment, all things that people need in order to survive and thrive. They are vital to our individual and collective well-being and they create the spaces for people and society to think about and to solve the wicked problems of our age. Success for you may be on a global stage or a more local one within a small group of valued family and friends. But wherever you go, you will make a difference, and that is vital. From here on, remember, there's no endpoint assessment, no marking for your work, only a small voice inside that expresses pride and determination as you make your way through life. But if I had to choose a set of people to make change and to make things better, it would be you, our graduates. And just now, I can ask no less of you than that you thrive in your life journeys, that you make a difference, and that, in doing so, piece by piece, you change everything. You have the rest of your life to spend, and I will be delighted to watch as you spend it wisely and for the benefit of others in these complicated times. So well done, graduates. Have a great day. You've earned it, and I congratulate you. Well done. The university has within its gift the authority to award honorary degrees to individuals whose achievements and activities are resonant with the core values of the institution. We now make one such award, and I'm very pleased to invite Mike Tooby to propose the award of an honorary doctorate of education of Bath Spa University to Veronica Ryan, winner of the 2022 Turner Prize. Vice Chancellor, guests, I'm honoured and delighted to propose Veronica Ryan for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Such an award is in recognition of her achievements on the international stage for her work as an artist, one of the most distinctive sculptors of her generation. Veronica was born in Montserrat, the small volcanic island in the Caribbean, but grew up in the southeast of England after her family came to Britain. When she arrived at Bath Academy of Art in 1978, it was a very different place to the school that we are part of today. She was not a typical student, as much for being female as any other aspect of her background. Bath Academy was in its final years of being based at Corsham Court. Veronica found an understanding teacher in the late Michael Penny, who made the university mace uh, behind which we possess today. Mike had an empathy for Veronica's ideas and approach, and he helped her develop her own personal language. Michael's wife, Marlene, who was ostensibly in an administrative role, Veronica still remembers as a supportive member of staff to students like her. Veronica was encouraged to continue study, which she pursued in a postgraduate degree at the Slade in London. 
I first met and worked with her in the mid-1980s. She was featuring in exhibitions with a group of her contemporaries, artists each forging a distinct identity from their shared situations as young black men and women. Her work had already demonstrated the rich imagery and brilliant attention to materials for which she is now known. She was included in many exhibitions that, as recent historical surveys of 1980s art have begun to document, were groundbreaking. However, what Veronica's work resisted a reductive interpretation of identity. She enriched and layered what this might mean, particularly by referencing natural forms, like seeds or fruit, and bringing materials together to create assemblages subtle and nuanced in scale, color, and surface. Now, it's important to say today, seeing her work as we might now at Tate Modern, or other major museums, or in high profile survey exhibitions like the Whitney Biennale, or recently the Sharjah Biennale, that her journey from four decades ago to today is also testament to how challenging maintaining a career as an artist can be. If quiet, thoughtful art such as hers was lost to fashion in the 1990s, she also had to deal with loss, quite literally. She experienced personal loss, and so too the loss of her work, the theft of a key piece from a public sculpture park to the destruction of her entire 1995 solo exhibition at Camden Art Centre in a fire in an art storage warehouse. Even the town that she was born in, in Montserrat, was destroyed following the eruption of its volcano in 1995. Since the 1990s, she has divided her time between New York and Britain. This has sometimes meant that she has had no secure studio, but her determination and her positive nature ensured that she always found ways to keep working. She may have mourned, but she has never been mournful. I recall her joyfully showing me new work in a tiny tool shed lent her by a friend with whom she shared the workbench. That was where she found to keep working. A residency in Barbara Hepworth's studio in St. Ives resulted in a powerful show in Tate St. Ives in 2000. It fused her personal language with a deep understanding of modernist sculpture, and it lays the foundations for her current work. But over the first two decades of the 21st century, while her work gained ever greater richness, her CV reveals that after that Tate St. Ives show, it was another 17 years until her next solo exhibition in Wakefield, a revisiting of her own take on Hep Hepworth's legacy. Two projects in 2021 transformed her public profile. Her wonderful shirt survey show at Spike Island in Bristol and her striking, witty, and touching public sculptures in Hackney, commissioned to celebrate the Windrush generation, led to her winning the Turner Prize last year. Amongst other forms of recognition, she has been an, made an RA and was awarded the OBE for services to sculpture. It is truly wonderful and uplifting to see Veronica's art and indeed her personal qualities celebrated as they are now. And let us note that this is a product of a lifelong drive and commitment to continue to make art, to find meaning and identity in the power of material, to understand the natural world around us, and to express the value of care, and to remind us of the fragility of what we care for. Vice Chancellor, I present to you Veronica Ryan as eminently worthy of the award of Doctor of Arts of Bath Spa University.
have written something because otherwise I, I get nervous and I go off at tangents. And so I've written something and I want to first of all thank Mike for such a wonderful supportive map of my practice. The Mattress Factory in Pittsburgh in 2012 contacted me saying someone I know had inquired about the work. I was in an exhibition titled Installed with five artists from different countries following the, following the residency there. This person turned out to be Mike. Interconnections over time and space, stitching on picking, threads, the back stitch, interrogating, medicinal plants, fruit, vegetables, planting seeds, also including detritus and concerns with the environment. Mangoes, for example, originated in India. Breadfruit also originated in the Pacific. These are all some of the concerns inherent in my work. These also include psychological paradigms along a spectrum of systems. The extended self, all parameters of inquiry through materials and intention. Learning bronze casting here in Bath when I was a student continues to be central to my practice. Um, one current work titled Scaffold um, in part references architecture of thoughts, hanging and sitting within in internal, external structures. Play is terribly important. Early access to possibilities, kind teachers and tutors, using what you have, enable continuity. People remind me that as artists, periods of drought are part of the journey. My own journey has been to keep doing what feels most important for self-care. When people inquire about work, how one is doing, you have it there, never invisible to yourself. I would like to thank the university for recognition shown to me with the honor of this reward of the degree. Thank you very much. We will now move to the presentation of awards to graduates of Bath Spa University, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor to receive the graduates from the Bath School of Art, Film and Media. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Combined Awards. Francesca Olivia Balcom. <laughs> Chloe Ann Burns. Jasmine Eve Clark. Mary Ruth Kutaja. Elise Marie Davin. J. John Gibbon Thrower. Kyra Ann Graham Taylor. <laughs> Leanne Naomi Hassel. <laughs> K. 
Katie Elizabeth Hitchin. Lauren Megan Hurley. Coral Olive Louise Monday. Eleanor Kate Sydenham. Lily Cheryl Antonova Tepechula. Tepechulova, sorry. <laughs> Leonie Scout Wiggin. And Daphne Lois Zulu. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with, with honours in contemporary arts practice. Linny Donkin. <laughs> Aileen Lyon. <laughs> Erica Azuma. Emma Brown. Clara Chojak. Amanda Joy Hall. Callum James Hawkins. Sapphire Hendrickson. <laughs> Go Hooray. Christina Hughes. Veronica Maria Jaworska. Ella Melanie Hazel Joseph. <laughs> Isabel Charlotte Kitchen. <laughs> Isidora Krismanovic. <laughs> Sophie Lines. Phoebe Rose Martin. <laughs> Sophie Louise Morgan. <laughs> Apachara Papan. <laughs> Isabel Randall. Cameron James Reeves. <laughs> Mia Ann Snelling. <laughs> Adriana White. <laughs> and Leah Wilcock. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Arts Practice with Foundation Year. Just a moment. Just a moment. <laughs> Wait. Asta Wright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Olivia Hannah Rees. Georgiana Desiree Stewart Ashley. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Creative Media. Matthew James Cook. Callum James Croft. Kieran David Ford. Connor Reese Hare. Caitlin Rennie Holmes. Austin James Lane. Alfie James Langson. <laughs> Lucy Annie Elizabeth O'Connor. <laughs> William James Redding. <laughs> Ruby Hannah Rowe. <laughs> Alistair. Sorry, Adam Alistair Shepherd. <laughs> Noah Nathaniel Stubbings. <laughs> and Jasmine Athena Telford. <laughs> Vice Chancellor. I present the following candidates for the, for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Film and Screen Studies. Josephine Rose Carville. <laughs> Harvey Palmer Dodds. <laughs> Holly Greenaway. <laughs> Alice K. Orchard. Ollie James Quinn. <laughs> Tobias Oliver Rasmussen. <laughs> Zoe Seren Beth Thorne. <laughs> Joseph James Warren. <laughs> and Meredith Ruby Willis. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with honours in film and television and digital production. Christopher William Charles Allen. Jake Allen. Robert Adam Bell. Maximus Morgan William Bojar. Joseph Peter Boudet. James Daniel Bullen. Jaden Carter. Ray Castillo. Emma Chabuk. Rochelle Andrea Chambers. Alex Joseph Childs. Thomas James Clancy. Luke Johnson Connolly. Sasha Lily Conti. Matthew Cruz Evans. Ishika Desai. 
Serena Jade Di Filippo. Louis Oliver Dixon. Angela Jade Franjos. Daniel Alex Giuliani. Rowan Charles Hales. Tristan Owen Head. Declan Jack Henley. Tannis Herbert. Jemima Rose Ivamy. Samuel Neil Jenkins. Harry Stephen James Knox. Benjamin Michael Lovegrove. Alexander Robert P Peter McDonough. Emma Miller. Ewan Henry Morgan. <laughs> Alexandra Nankiville. <laughs> Harry Johnston Orr. <laughs> Oscar James Phillips. <laughs> Francesca Price Smith. <laughs> Jamie Francis Charles Salter. <laughs> Pablo Andres Kiffin Salter. Jason Dean Scotchmer. Tyrese Anthony Ship. Amelia Jane Spencer. Josie Stanhope Powers. Sophie Kathleen Taylor. Jacob Finley Thomas. Kana J. Trower. Stella Libomarova Todorova. Alex Jamie Townsend. Joseph Adam Spencer Tuckerman. Tegan Vincent Cook. Louis Max Wagon. Emily Robertson Weir. Samuel Eppley Wilson. Sophie Alice Young. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates, candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Film, Television and Digital produ Production with Professional Placement Year. Imogen Bennett. <laughs> Joel David Saunders. Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Fine Art with Foundation Year. Karis Cullen. <laughs> Alexandra Zoe Hall. <laughs> Kirsty Jones. Nikki Joyce. <laughs> Santhi Constantino. <laughs> Sean Elizabeth Messenger. <laughs> Anna 
Anna Isolde Miller. Lydia Barbara Gwen Miller. Abby May Mills. Harvey William David Mock. Molly Jane Pierce. Jack Roberts. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts in Fine Art. Jade Patterson. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Fine Art. Jenna Lamorna Rose Axton. <laughs> Megan Jade Buckwell. <laughs> Isabel Ann Nicole Casson. <laughs> Dion Natalie Clark. Isabel Cole. <laughs> Rachel Crisp. <laughs> Ella Madeline Davis. <laughs> Lucrezia Drossi. Olivia May Francis. <laughs> Tina Grintala. <laughs> Mia Olivia Hatzer. <laughs> Ella Margaret Holmes. Madeline Lucy Victoria Jarvis. <laughs> Lorraine Jeffries. <laughs> Grace Shelley Latham. <laughs> Latham. <laughs> Alice Amy Loder. Rosie Lucia Nicholson. <laughs> Catherine Rose Oram. <laughs> Beatrice Matilda Frith Peppercorn. <laughs> Dulcie May Power. Nuria Mwijj Duran. <laughs> Saskia Sherlaw. <laughs> Daisy Drew Patricia Lynn Smith. <laughs> Darcy Went. <laughs> Megan Jean Wright. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Media Communications. Erin Daisy Dunn. <laughs> Theodore Marcus Elderfield. <laughs> Ch 
Daisy Olivia Hadley. Chloe Marie Lawrence. Lola Nova Joanne Manuel Cook. Kate Olivia Matthews. Holly Mayrick. Georgia Morgan Bennett. Christy Ping. Danielle Dawn Salt. Ellie Megan Stahl. And Courtney Michaela Stevens. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Photography with Foundation Year Lizzie Ann Collar, <laughs> Taishin Kiyuchi, <laughs> Georgina Eve Weber Lutkin Clark. Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor Arts in Photography. Charlie Stammers. <laughs> Vice-Chancellor, I present the following candidates for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Photography. Jodie Hannah Ackerman. <laughs> Natalie Ashbrook. Lily Ann Barton. <laughs> Ellen Catherine Brooks. <laughs> Tom Ira Cassidy. <laughs> Rosie Neve Davies. <laughs> Keris Eve Evans. Robin Valerie Deborah Fogg. <laughs> Oa Fontana Rava. <laughs> Sophie Grace Hall. <laughs> Maria Elizabeth Harris Sutton. Grace Elizabeth Rose Heesman. <laughs> Cami Eloise Jordan. Erin <laughs> Faye Kennedy Smith. <laughs> Jakob Jan Knapp. <laughs> Rosie Helena Kyle. Marty Singh Wa Lao. <laughs> Ella Francesca Malvisi. <laughs> Oliver James Mansell. <laughs> Raphael Thomas Manzo. <laughs> Emily Sky Mason. Stephanie May Murphy. <laughs> Annabelle Linda Murphy. <laughs> Yamuna Shukla. <laughs> Archie Thornton. <laughs> Abigail Francis Tinian.
Drew Turner. Holly Ann Warren. And Jack Williams. Vice Chancellor, I present the following candidate for the award of the Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Combined Awards Lucy Wotton. Vice Chancellor, in addition to those candidates presented to you, I commend to you the other candidates listed but in absentia for the conferment of their various awards. On my authority as Vice Chancellor of Bath Spa University, I confer the awards of those candidates here present and those in absentia. Graduates, in the time honoured tradition, you may now remove your hats. Well done! If you just remember, everybody needs to give one hat back to the people you get your gowns from. But it doesn't have to be yours. I'd like to invite Sapphire Henriksen, who has just taken her BA Honours in Creative Arts Practice, to deliver the student valediction. Pratchett wrote, in my experience, what every true artist wants, really wants, is to be paid. At a time when creative subjects are being devalued and defunded, I think that we have a point to prove, and Bath Spa has to make a choice to back us in that, standing firm against the pressure to diminish what we're here today to celebrate, and embrace the importance of arts, holding creative spaces despite the challenges and cuts to arts education. We have all fought to get here today, whether we fought for everyone or just for ourselves, and even if sometimes that fight was making it to class a little late instead of not at all, it was hard and worth it, and you did brilliantly. When I say art, I'm not talking just about traditional art courses, but about film and media and photography as well, every way of working that people in this room have chosen to express ideas and creativity. Art is an expression of humanity. It's how we grow and learn and teach and remember, and it's present in every version of society on record. It's easy to forget how universally important art is when it's so personally important, but art is everything. It's the mud I drank my tea from this morning, which was made by someone in this room, and it's the music we listen to while getting ready, and it's the posters on picket lines around the country arguing for fair pay and working conditions. It will be the marks we leave on the world, and I think that together, those marks will make it better. Building spaces to be creative, whether that's socially or physically, in rooms or in communities, is more than important, it's necessary. I think that what I'll remember most looking back will be the friends I've made, the collaborations and debates and shared meals and late nights in the studio, and sharing this really delicate and developmental time in my life with other people, with this community that we've built of artists and makers, students and lecturers and technicians and administrators and cleaners, people I've seen every day for three years who have helped shape who I am today with kindness and patience and humor, and who I'll have helped shape in return. We couldn't have done that without the physical space to do it, the workshops and studios and study spaces and empty corners that no one was using. As we take our next steps into the world, it's important to remember that we fought so hard to get here today. And while the last few years have been challenging, we've learned to advocate for ourselves and our peers. We've learned new ways of communicating, of being creative, and of adapting to quite precarious circumstances. 
While I'm sure a lot of us are still adjusting to these big changes, it's important to take a breath and appreciate what a brilliant effort we've all put into learning, community, and creativity during our degrees, and to pause and be proud of what we've accomplished. Here's to the class of 2023. Thank you so far, that was brilliant. I'd like to finish our ceremony today with uh, an Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face, the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may your God hold you in the palm of his hand. I declare this ceremony closed. Now, graduates, you may remember that we will be exiting you from the auditorium via this door over here. So my colleague Helen will show you the way. Whoa, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Thank you.